Do you believe in conspiracies? You mean something that's completely left? Cher hired four men to forcibly remove Elijah from a New York hotel in November of 2022. Some said it was an intervention, others said it was kidnapping, but Cher was never charged with anything and she denies that even happened. Newly revealed court documents have accused Cher of employing four men to forcefully remove her son, Elijah Blue Almond. There were pictures taken of her son when he was kidnapped. Sometimes people are done with you. Are you saying that your mother didn't shouldn't shave her school? Yeah, it was very hard for my, for my mother to accept. She's claiming that he'd been missing, uh, maybe even dangerous strung out on drugs and she said if the court didn't give her immediate control of Elijah's life and finances he would probably end up dead. Breaking news that Cher's home in Malibu the Ventura County Sheriff's Department arrested a man at the singer's mansion this afternoon. The suspect 23 year old Donovan Ruiz reportedly lives at Cher's home. What does it feel like to be so iconic? It doesn't feel like anything. Oh okay so it's just I mean, I'm Cher. No, I'm Cher. Cher thinks she might be, you know, rescuing her son, but if someone else is named as a conservator, then they get all the say on Elijah Blue's life. Cher will be off to the side, and I'm not sure she realizes that. Welcome to BJ Investigates, a show I just created and might never do again. We are in a little bit of a different set today. Don't worry, we will be back to the regularly scheduled set in the next video. So without further ado, in last week's video, we did talk a little bit about Hollywood's biggest bully, Perez Hilton. Make sure to check that one out if you missed it. In today's episode, I wanted to highlight a little bit more of a current and relevant event, and that is what is going on with Cher and this whole trying to put her son into a conservatorship situation. Now, I have covered this issue extensively on my other channel, That Surprise Witness TV, and I'm reporting from the That Surprise Witness TV studios today. But if you want to get down into the granular details, I do suggest you go over there and follow that channel because I am doing live streams over there all the time about Cher and this conservatorship. But what I wanted to talk about in today's video on this channel is a kind of TLDR, sort of what do you really need to know about what's going on in the case. So let's get right into it. In the early 1970s, Cher was dating now openly gay music mogul, David Geffen. I was madly in love. He called me the next day and said, I fell in love. I'm in love with Cher. When she, quote, tore his heart out by leaving him for a Southern rock and roll star by the name of Greg Allman of the famous Allman Brothers Band. My next guest is a very special member of the rock music scene. For the past two years, he was voted number one in the all-star rock and jazz poll. You know, he's got enough gold records to open up a chain of banks. He's also the lead singer in the great Allman Brothers Band. He's a guitarist, a composer, and he's really terrific. He's also a very good friend of mine, Mr. Greg Allman. People love <laughs> to bring up that you were married to Cher. Are you tired of hearing about that? Actually, she was married to me. <laughs> and I am, yes, I'm tired of the question. Cher and Greg's relationship didn't really last too long either. Married Cher, I mean, I, I, I wonder... there was good parts to these things, and then there was, there was bad parts, and it just, it, it took a lot of growing up real fast. I wanted to ask you about Cher. You didn't hear a lot about Greg Holt for a while. Then all of a sudden he married Cher, and uh, boom. You guys were in every uh, magazine in the country. Well, and to tell you the truth, I didn't even think about that. One day she said to me after we had realized that two of us had fallen in love, she said, you know, this could get you in some real trouble in that, you know, press is gonna be all over you. And I thought, oh, of course not. I mean, I, love's really blind, that's for sure. And all of a sudden, I mean, I couldn't make a move. I couldn't go out in, in the front lawn and wash my car without people being over the gate. And I thought, this is ridiculous. But they did get married and have a kid named Elijah Blue Allman before going their separate ways. Elijah Blue was born on July 10th, 1976, and he had a rough childhood by basically all accounts. He was sent off to a boarding school when he was like seven years old, and he's reported feeling resentful about that in later years in his life. You absolutely need unconditional parental love in those, in those dark hours. And that was lacking. That was lacking from that direction, you know? I think my uh, sibling Chaz said it best when, you know, when you have a family that one person is at the head of that pyramid and, and that the, the family, you know, is there to kind of serve the needs of that person, it's 
very difficult being one of the other people, you know, even one of the principal people. I would say sometimes a lot of the complications could come from, you know, that idea. And so I thought that that was very, um, you know, erudite when uh, Chaz said that in Chaz's documentary. He met some friends at the Hyde School in Bath, Maine, who he would go on to start a band with. Private schools, those bastions of upper middle class America where parents who can afford it send their sons and daughters to get away from everyday problems, are now plagued by the same everyday problems that plague the public schools. But there is one private school, tuition $15,000 a year, that seems to have a solution. It's the Hyde School in Bath, Maine, where 145 students get a different kind of education. Most of these youngsters have had problems ranging from drugs, alcohol or food abuse to more severe behavioral problems. Joe Gold founded the Hyde School in 1966. His dream was to have a school where troubled youngsters could come for help. The question is, can they look at themselves? Do they really want help? And are they willing to put something in to get it? And we've talked a lot in this class about how in order to really come to grips with yourself now, you need to come to grips with parts of your past. Like I had this incident with my grandparents' house and it kind of burned down and it was my fault. And, uh, <laughs> but the same day I, I met a girl and I, and I like, I didn't want to stay at the motel with my family. I wanted to go out and hang out with this girl. And it was unbelievable that I didn't recognize like my own selfishness. My, my parents like, and I came to agreement that the character thing has to be put on the back burner for now, and I have to go for my grades. You don't put one aside to work on the other, ever. Grades are a result of character. If you put your character back on the back burner, then your grades are going to go right down in the ashtray, you know? For example, Brothers Keeper at Hyde School. Uh, the, uh, a kid, if, if you go out and you smoke... I'm one of your classmates, and I see I'm going to get you to turn yourself in. So, I'm a kid at the Hyde School. Yep. I'm smoking. You're going to come to me and say, turn myself in? Yeah, sure. I'm going to say, buzz off. <laughs> Not here you won't. <laughs> Do you ever feel like you're snitching on your friends? No, I mean... When I, I think when everyone first comes here, they do. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I just thought, narc. I mean, I'm not going to narc. On your friends. Yeah, I mean, no, <laughs> no way. And uh, the longer you're here, the more you realize if this person, if I respect this person, and I love this person, then I want them to go after their best. And I know that if it's someone with an eating disorder, if they're if they're abusing food, then they're not going after the best. I'm going to hold them to that. The band is called Bedsy, and it's still up and running today. It's a rare, candid, and exclusive glimpse of one of Hollywood's very own royal families. Hey, Hi, baby. Only extra was there to capture this tender private moment between Cher and her only son, Elijah Blue. The legendary superstar made a surprise appearance backstage at Hollywood's famed Roxy nightclub. I think he's good. And the usually camera shy Cher couldn't hide her motherly pride as she opened up to Extra. I'm real excited about it. I'm very, you know, I'm very proud of all of them. They've worked hard. I support this band 100%. Elijah has also stated that his mother, Cher, was a cold and standoffish person as a mother, and he never really felt nurtured by her in any way. In a 2014 interview, Elijah admitted that he began experimenting with substances at the age of 11, which led him to a years-long substance issues battle. It's actually shocking to think about myself like at 11 years old, like buying drugs in Harlem. But he was able to successfully stop this usage in 2008, at least for some time. And Elijah seems to have had basically no childhood at all whatsoever before Cher decided to put him to work, literally performing, in my opinion, what appears to be child labor, but I mean, I don't know, in a sense he'll proven guilty. For example, like I said earlier, Elijah was born July 1976, and by December 1976, which was like literally the same year, just a few months later, he's four months old, he's already got put to work. Here's him and Cher, Christmas special she was doing, and look, here he is, star of the show. And this type of using children for PR and putting them to work very early was not a brand new thing for Cher. She also had done this to her other child, Chaz Bono. Chaz grew up the same way, basically as a cast member on Cher's various television shows. Last 
and baby Elijah would also accompany her to movie premieres, televised interviews. I mean, the baby picks her up. Just take a scroll through Getty Images if you don't believe me. But by the time Elijah would have turned two years old, Cher and Elijah's dad, Greg, were already on the outs and Cher was on a concert tour going all over the place, all around everywhere. And not only did she bring Chaz on the tour with her, but she also brought Elijah, who, like I said, wasn't even two years old whenever she decided to bring him out there. So from what I've been able to find, it definitely looks like Chaz and Elijah had pretty much no childhood and they were put to work very early on. They were exposed to a lot of things from the industry, behind the scenes and everything else. And that's just how it was. Then by the time Elijah was like 13, 14 years old, he was still in Cher's band and he was playing guitar in her band. And it's very interesting to me because 1989, he's on tour with Cher playing the guitar in her band at bars and God knows what else. And by the next year, in August 1990, we get announcements in the newspaper that Elijah is going to be going to the Hyde School, a preparatory school that is very exclusive in the middle of nowhere in Maine. It's very difficult to get into the school. It's very expensive to attend the school, and you have to be like a certain type of person to even be accepted for admissions. Specifically, the school is for troubled teens. So Cher might want you to believe that Elijah just has all these issues and all these problems independent from her, but it is very, very interesting to me that only one year after Cher brought this child on tour with her, something she had been doing since he was literally under two years old, then he finally ends up in this sort of like behavioral development high school program. And to me, in my opinion, it kind of looks like Cher is a primary reason he ended up there at all. He said the first time he was experimenting with drugs was when he was 11 years old, but he was living with Cher at that time. So now in 2023, she wanna act like, oh, he's on drugs, let me take over his life. But baby, you were the one that exposed him to that lifestyle in the very first place. And you might be wondering, why did Cher choose the Hyde School over any other school? Well, remember those clips from the school that you just looked at them 60 Minutes clips. According to newspaper reports, Cher simply just saw the 60 Minutes episode and decided that she wanted to send her child there. Which, according to that same article, a lot of parents had the same idea. There was a huge spike in interest whenever that special came out. And it just made it obvious to me that they've been using 60 Minutes to kind of shill these unconventional programs and drugs and medications since literally at least the 1980s. And if you missed our Ozempic video on my other channel, do make sure to go check that out because we get into it a little bit there. Elijah's relationship with his father was also strained because his dad, Greg, admittedly struggled with alcohol and substance use and abuse issues throughout his life. These issues caused him to be pretty much absent from Elijah's life in his formative years. Unfortunately for Elijah, he would go on to develop highly publicized substance and alcohol issues himself, which further strained his relationship with both parents. I was lucky to have um, a lot of of those men, you know, who were who were, you know, my mom's boyfriends from Kilmer to Tom Cruise. I, I was lucky to have them in my life because I didn't. My dad wasn't around. How old were you when Val Kilmer gave you a, a human scalp? Well, he was, you know, he was around when I was about six, so that was probably. Uh, was he bad in six? Eighty-one, eighty-three. So he wasn't Batman yet. No. 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 In 2013, Elijah married a woman by the name of Mary Angela King, a fellow musician and performing artist who goes by the stage name Queenie King. I'm searching for a world of peace, searching for serenity. I was brought up in this cult called the COG, mm -hmm. uh, the Children of God. And, uh, you know, I was very, well, music wasn't allowed. We weren't cultured. Right. We weren't really allowed to watch movies. You know, we had a list of, like, specific movies that were okayed. Um, I don't really know Cher as a mother-in-law because I haven't seen her since we eloped. <laughs> You've had good times and bad times. Yeah. Mostly, we've, mostly we've, good we've times. mostly had good times together. Um, she's she's a very complicated, interesting person, and um, yeah, hopefully many more good memories to come. Yeah, yeah. A lot of other stuff happened in the meantime, but for now, let's fast forward to November 2021, when Elijah filed for divorce from Mary Angela. The filings in that divorce give a lot of information, including allegations by the wife, Mary Angela, that Cher had hired a group of goons to kidnap Elijah on their wedding anniversary at a New York City hotel in 2022. 
Some other allegations that, for example, the wife made in these divorce filings were that Cher was holding the wife's expensive property hostage, including these four paintings that are apparently worth a lot of money and Cher won't give Mary Angela the deed, that Elijah would quite literally go missing for months on end, and that the wife didn't really believe Elijah was even actually involved in the divorce paperwork filings. So they never really got around to divorcing for those reasons. Well, late last year, the global tabloid media had a field day, actually many field days in a row, over Cher's filing for a conservatorship over this son, Elijah, who is now 47 years old. And the reporting in these stories placed a lot of emphasis on the fact that Cher was supposedly, allegedly so worried about her son's life that she had to pursue a conservatorship to quote, protect her son who was struggling with alleged mental health and substance abuse issues. And shoot, even the 2022 Mother of the Year nominee, April Margera, weighed in in support of Cher's attempt at usurping Elijah's rights, something April had done to her own son just a year prior. And honestly, to be completely fair, wanting to protect your child is all fine and good, if that was what was really going on. But Cher did not apply for a conservatorship of the person or of Elijah's personal choices. Actually, Cher stated she didn't even know where Elijah was and did not bother to locate him before trying to get this conservatorship. No, no, she only wanted a financial conservatorship. She actually didn't even apply for the right type of conservatorship. She filed for a very severe form of conservatorship that completely strips the victim of their rights to manage the money and property that's rightfully theirs. So I went and looked up the court documents myself and I tried to see what I could piece together in this twisted, convoluted tale that in all honesty is giving me nostalgia vibes and not in a good way. So these initial conservatorship filings revealed some important details about Elijah, his whereabouts, and about Cher's potential motivation for this legal strategy. For example, the conservatorship application revealed that Elijah was, quote, due to receive distributions from a trust fund that his famous father had left behind for him. And these public documents informed the public that the trustee of the trust, who happened to be Greg Allman's longtime manager, that's the dad, he's dead. This trustee was literally holding the funds hostage from their rightful owner, which is Elijah. According to the conservatorship filings, the trustee was required to give Elijah his money by December 31st, 2023. And Cher had filed for conservatorship just like four days before that, December 27th, 2023. And it kind of looked like Cher had finagled this timeline to be short on purpose, because another thing that she had asked the court for in the conservatorship request was to waive her legally required responsibility to give Elijah and his wife proper notice of the filings. Meaning she wanted to get a conservatorship over her 47 year old son without so much as giving him proper legal notice that she was trying to do that. But at the same time as these court filings were coming out, a whole bunch of other stuff was happening in the out of court arena and these happenings are equally mortifying, if not more so. First and foremost, before Cher even officially filed for the conservatorship, Elijah himself was making ominous and cryptic Instagram posts that explicitly referred to conservatorships as quote, imprisonment. For example, on December 16th, he posted about his quote, friends in Mexico who were apparently being held hostage against their will and tortured and abused. Elijah stated that he had not forgotten about those friends and in this post, he tags another Instagram account called imprisonment via conservatorship. Two days later, on December 18th, Elijah's wife, Mary Angela, published an ominous post to her Instagram that depicted a teddy bear with a duct tape mouth. This teddy bear would also appear in a music video a few weeks later, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. The next day after this teddy bear post on Mary Angela's Instagram, December 19th, 2023, Elijah published yet another conservatorship related post to Instagram. And again, tagging that imprisonment via conservatorship Instagram account in the post. Three days after that, December 22nd, he published two conservatorship related Instagram posts, again, tagging the imprisonment via conservatorship account. Two days later on Christmas Eve, 2023, the wife, Mary Angela, published possibly the most alarming social media post on the issue to date at that point, and it was kind of vague, but here it is. In the post, there's like this Christmas tree and the caption is literally chilling. Mary Angela thanks the people who had helped her return Elijah, quote, safely to the United States. She doesn't say in the post where Elijah was, but she claims it took working with authorities from two different countries in order to get him back to the United States. And y'all, this is pretty serious because it was literally only three days after that that Cher went ahead and applied for the conservatorship. So based on these posts from both Elijah and his wife, Mary Angela, one could be forgiven for believing that Elijah and his wife already knew that Cher and co were planning to do this conservatorship thing because they were already talking about it. 
Now, in addition to all of that going on, there were also these other interviews coming out with the wife in the mainstream media where she was basically spilling the beans to some extent. She was saying that Cher had orchestrated Elijah going into a holistic alternative medicine program rehab. And she does in those interviews disclose that the rehab center was located in Mexico. Now, this also is corroborated by Elijah's posts because that first conservatorship post that he did make did mention his friends down in Mexico. Well, long story short, the first hearing on the temporary conservatorship in California ends up getting scheduled for Friday, January 5th, 2024 at 1.30 p.m. in the Stanley Moss Courthouse. Not only is that the same courthouse as Britney's conservatorship was in, but it's also the same judge who allowed Britney to be illegally imprisoned and trafficked for years, Judge Brenda Penny. In Cher's filings, Cher said that she didn't actually know where Elijah was, so Brenda imposed a court-appointed attorney as Elijah's legal representation. But between the time that Cher filed for the conservatorship on December 27th and a few days later on the scheduled hearing date of January 5th, all kind of peep hit the fan. For one, Elijah withdrew his 2021 divorce petition, which stated that he no longer wanted to get divorced from his wife. Second, Elijah apparently somehow managed to hire lawyers to oppose Cher's filings. And he opposed the conservatorship itself, saying that it was absolutely unnecessary, but that's not the only thing he opposed. He also opposed Cher in particular as his conservator, stating that even if the judge determined that he did need a conservatorship over his money, he would rather his wife or a neutral third party to be the conservator. He also opposed Cher's attempt to get out of her duty to give him a proper notice. So as part of these filings, he told the court that Cher's side hadn't even bothered to provide him with all the confidential filings that they made about him in the case. Elijah also attached email receipts as exhibits to his filing, showing the judge how hard Elijah had actually tried to get Cher's legal team to give him the filings. And these receipts also showed Cher's team being belligerent, snot-nosed, heartless assholes and denying Elijah the mere chance to see the allegations that they made against him to the judge. In his opposition filings, Elijah claimed that Cher had known exactly where he was and basically implies that she was lying about not knowing his whereabouts. He also stated that he had been in a treatment program. He was working closely with an AA group and a sponsor on a recovery journey, and that he had actually been clean and sober for more than 90 days. He also told the judge he was more than willing to submit to any and all testing to prove that assertion. So the morning of January 5th, the hearing comes and all these headlines are squawking about how Elijah was missing. But once the hearing itself rolled around, the only person missing seemed to be Sherilyn Sarkeesian herself. Elijah showed up accompanied by his wife, and they both looked healthy and totally fine. Elijah Blue suddenly walks in supposedly into court, shocking kind of everybody, total Perry Mason thing. Um, he reportedly looked tanned and healthy, and he told the judge that he's been sober for three months. Wasn't there a thing about them not being able to locate him? Like, it's almost like they thought he wasn't gonna show up, but he showed up wearing a suit, looked great, looks just like his father. And guess what? His wife um, and a brand new lawyer were with him. Very sweet, honestly. Like when I went up to him, he looked at me right in the eyes, like was very like, he looked like he wanted to say something, you know, but whatever is best for him, if his lawyers, you know, said is instructed not to comment, don't comment. We, I just wanted at least to let him know that like, you know, we're here to support his freedom. Um, and I, I do think they got that message, so. Again, Cher did not bother to even show up for this hearing that she cared so much about. Anyway, at the hearing, the judge ended up not being Brenda Penny, which is honestly a good thing, but that judge saw straight through Cher's lawyer's little gamesmanship. Um, and she said, you had the opportunity to give him 24 hours of notice and you didn't take it. So I'm not persuaded. She said it multiple times. Like, you don't have to stand and I'm not persuaded. I'm not persuaded. I am not persuaded. Like it felt. The court appointed lawyer, John Guy, stated that he actually had a conflict of interest in the case and asked the judge to dismiss him as Elijah's lawyer, which the judge did do. Basically, they discharged John Guy. So they they said, actually, I'm gonna allow him to choose his own lawyers, so. Apparently that also made the lawyers for Cher really mad, like they were super excited to be working with this John Guy guy. And that doesn't surprise me because it is a little cartel in there. All these court appointed counsels are part of a little elite club. Sam Ingham was one of them, but I'm not even, just give me off my soapbox. Let's get back to the point. So that was in a way still a win for Elijah because Brenda Penny had imposed this court appointed attorney onto Elijah named John Guy. And we've seen in the past how those court appointed attorneys just honestly have too much of a conflict of interest. They just sit there
there and collect fees or whatever. And when that John Guy guy decided to dismiss himself or recuse himself or whatever from the case, the judge dismissed him. That cleared the way for Elijah's chosen, hired, retained counsel to take. And coming as a surprise, definitely not to me and probably not to you, Cher's attorneys were really upset that Elijah got to choose his own lawyer. They even stood up in court and tried to argue that Elijah did not have the capacity to hire or retain his own lawyer. We're not certain that Allman has the capacity. And the judge was like, mm, I'm not really sure you have standing. Which is quite literally crazy making, maddening and infuriating and asinine and I don't know, probably a lot of other stuff because Elijah had already in fact, indeed, gone out and retained his own lawyer. So these people are standing up in front of the judge basically saying he can't do something that he already did. It doesn't make any sense at all whatsoever. They were upset about it, but it's probably because they just wanted to work with John Guy or whatever. But anyway, it was a win for Elijah and frankly, the only correct constitutional decision to make to let him hire his own lawyer. Anyway, okay. And not only did the judge side with Elijah on this lawyer issue, she also sided with him on the notice issue. She specifically had a huge problem with Cher's lawyers keeping the confidential documents away from Elijah since he would literally need them in order to defend himself against what they said in the documents. So at the end of the hearing, Elijah was able to walk away freely as a free man with most of his constitutional rights still intact, but not permanently. There are gonna be two more conservatorship hearings, one for a temporary conservatorship and one for a permanent conservatorship. The temporary conservatorship hearing was originally, like I said, scheduled for January 5th, but it's now been postponed to January 29th, 2024. There's also going to be a conservatorship hearing to make it permanent on March 9th, 2024. And since the hearings, it's become super obvious just the kind of vice grip that Cher and or her representatives have over the traditional media outlets because it's in full force and effect against Elijah. Bad choices for a 47 year old man are not unusual. How bad do the choices have to be in order for a judge to say, I'm basically taking your life away from you and giving it either to your mom or to a court appointed company that does this for a living? Well, that might still happen, you know. You can't just walk in as a loving mother and say, I need to rescue my son, give him to me, let me control, um, because you might not get that. The, the court, as you explained it, might give it to some stranger. So by the looks of things, even though the whole media was coming out talking about Elijah's missing, on the day of his hearing, they went ahead and put those articles out. Only person seemed to be missing was Cher because she sure was missing from those court proceedings and Elijah was not. So it doesn't really make her look too good. It's very not credible because she's over here telling news outlets out of one side of her mouth that Elijah's missing. That same exact very day that these stories are run, Elijah shows up to court with his wife, who he's no longer divorcing, and Cher is missing. So it's giving not credible, but but I don't know. I don't really, I didn't really have much faith in her to begin with. But since these hearings, it has become pretty obvious the type of vice grip that Cher does have over the traditional and the mainstream media because I haven't seen them printing one bad word about her. Not only that, even though Elijah did show up to court looking clean and sober, said that he hadn't done any drugs or illicit substances in over 90 days, he offered to submit himself to drug and alcohol testing. I don't really see the media really harping on that. They just talk about he's missing and he's clearly not missing. The man was at court. Anyway, so there is another hearing. It's been rescheduled, and that one's going to be on January 29th. Now, that's just for the temporary conservatorship. The judge could say, nah, we're not going to do no temporary conservatorship, but Elijah will not be out of the woods yet. He has another hearing in March, March 6th, and that one is for a permanent conservatorship. So that does give Cher and her snot-nosed attorneys at least a good two months to try and figure out a way to finagle this trust fund money out of Elijah's hands. I am hoping that they are unsuccessful in doing that because it is clear to me and anyone with eyes that it does not need to happen. It seems to me like it's probably, in my opinion, a little bit more about control. Cher probably doesn't like the wife very much. She probably just wants to be the HBIC, and I'm just so sorry, girl. You're 77 years old. Go play with your grandkids and sit down, okay? That's what I'm going to say. Speaking of grandkids, I mean, the man she's dating is young enough to be her grandson, but let me stop. Let me stop. Anyway, in the meantime, facts ain't defamation. Love you, mean it. Okay, bye. And this music legend is candidly sharing her feelings about Britney's time under her dad's control. It seemed to serve him, you know, no matter what she, the help that she needed and needs, if she, you know, if she's still needing it, I hear things, but no matter what, you just don't 
you love your children and sometimes you have to step in. I didn't like it. So I wanted to let her know that I was watching and I was listening.